Hello, I'm Jean Tung, one of the pediatric gastroenterologists here at the Mayo Clinic. Today I would like to discuss infliximab for patients with severe ulcerative colitis. First, a little background. Infliximab, otherwise known as Remicade, was approved for Crohn's disease in 1997. Subsequently, the ACT-1 and ACT-2 clinical trials demonstrated it could also be useful for patients with ulcerative colitis and led to its approval in 2005. The typical schedule for both Crohn's and ulcerative colitis is to give an induction schedule. That means we give it at week 0, 2, and 6, and then a maintenance schedule of every 8 weeks. However, in patients with severe ulcerative colitis, infliximab may actually still not prevent surgery. When we looked at our Mayo Clinic experience, 36% of patients still required surgery within a year, otherwise known as a colectomy. Those who improved enough to receive an induction schedule, all three doses of the induction schedule, were more likely to avoid surgery a year later. Several studies have shown that infliximab is metabolized very quickly in patients with higher C-reactive protein levels and low protein or albumin levels. The amount of intestine that is inflamed may also play a role in how fast the drug is metabolized. In a study published in the January 2015 issue of the Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology, researchers at St. Univers Vincent's University Hospital in Ireland specifically looked back at their experience of using an accelerated schedule versus the standard induction. The accelerated schedule consisted of approximately three infusions within 24 days, as opposed to the six weeks. In both scenarios, patients who were able to avoid surgery went on to infusions every eight weeks. All of the patients had been sick enough to receive IV steroids before starting infliximab. The patients were relatively young. The average age in the standard induction group was 34 and 38 in the accelerated group. So, who did better? In the short term, fewer patients went on to surgery in the accelerated schedule, 6.7% in the accelerated schedule versus 40% in the standard schedule. The C-reactive proteins seemed to decline faster in the group on the accelerated schedule. However, at one year, the colectomy rate was essentially the same at about 60%. Infliximab levels and measurement of antibodies to infliximab were not part of routine care, so these were not investigated. It is possible that patients in both groups needed to continue getting infliximab more frequently or even at a higher dose. The researchers did not report whether there were adverse events particularly related to infections. This was a relatively small study. However, it does suggest that if we start to infliximab in patients with severe ulcerative colitis who don't respond to steroids, we might need to consider giving infliximab more frequently than the standard induction schedule. We may need to also consider following infliximab and the response more closely afterwards and checking levels for several months. I hope you found this study as interesting as I did. Take care.